Watts com a galera aí. This is the vulgar display of podcast. Vulgar display of podcast. Right fucking now. Welcome to the Vulgar Display of Pod. You ready? <laughs> it's always his fault. <laughs> Is Larry back at work yet? <laughs> Don't think so. I doubt he made it. Nope. He is not. Maybe that's the running joke. Larry is still yeah. here. <laughs> Larry has not left. <laughs> Welcome to the Vulgar Display of Podcast. Hi. Hello. Ooh. We got the crew. The crew. The normal crew. The, the trio. The trio. The originals. The OGs. Triple OGs. But man, I'm pretty excited about this guy we got with Woo. us too. Hey. Yes, sir. Woo. My brother from another mother. Brandon Moses. Hey. Yes. Welcome yes. to the barn, buddy. Hey, thanks for having me. Brandon's having a, a liquid death water, Got and it's drink. delicious. Yay. <laughs> water is good. Thank you, liquid death. <laughs> yes. Oh, I got one. Do you need yeah. one? I do need one, yes. I, I got one. Do you drink There's the only one? I got the, yeah, the other one. And then Mark, I'm going to need you to tell me how delicious it is. And actually, hey, open it in the mic there. Oh. So official. <laughs> Give us a ah. <laughs> Look at that face. He's like, he is so I act like I enjoy this. <laughs> Another 30 cents. <laughs> Cha -ching. Cha -ching. This episode was brought to you by Liquid Death. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Past tense. <laughs> this episode brought to you by Liquid Death and Black Bayou Coffee Roasters out of Shreveport, Louisiana. We've been pounding that stuff all week. I yeah. know you have. You've already killed it. Yeah, I know. So good. Can't yeah, get enough of it. It is good. And Twan's going to leave with the bag. Yep. But back to the guest. Yes. Howdy. All the way from Oregon. So here's how I see this. Brandon Moses in the house. Brandon Moses living in Oregon now, but was was from this area. Actually, originally from somewhere else, right? No, I, I was born in Fargo. Was it, was it always yeah. Missouri? Yeah. In Arizona. Phoenix, yeah. came back when I was 12 and then spent the rest of my time here. Yeah. But he's in Oregon now. We don't get to see him near as much as, as I would like. Hit the uh, uh, cry button on that little system over there. Is there one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's it. Perfect. That was the cry. That was Perfect. the cry. Yes. Oh, that really gets you in the feels. It does. <laughs> Larry, get to work. Larry. Damn. Yeah, Brandon Moses. Uh, what I tried to, what I've been trying yes. to say, yes, is that you two are kind of like us two here. Yes. yes. So you yeah, guys have been best friends for like I don't know how many years. Uh, like what seventh grade playing baseball together when you moved here? Yeah, seventh grade. Well, I'm a year older than you, but yeah. So you'd have been like eighth or seventh. I was sixth or seventh. When we played yeah. baseball together. That's how we met. This, when he moved here from Arizona. Vontaire Blues, baby. Vontaire Blues represent one time. And you guys are two years younger than us, three. I think three or four. I'm class like of 03. He's class of 02. Mm -hmm. So turns 38 today, by the way. Happy yeah. birthday, Brandon Moses. Nice. Thank you yes. so much. Mm -hmm. you. Celebrating with us. Yes. Yeah. Wouldn't have it. Thanks for, thanks for coming down. And we appreciate you being here, Brandon Moses. Uh, but yeah, you guys' relationship runs pretty parallel to like what me and Tuan, we've been friends since sixth grade, Tuan, maybe even sixth uh, grade, probably, I think. Probably that. That's a good time frame. And we've, all four of us, music fans, yes. pretty much our whole lives. Me and him a lot would go, and I've said this before on previous episodes, we'd show up at a show not knowing you guys are there. And they'd be like, oh, hey, guys. Buddy, <laughs> yeah. Oh, buddy guy. <laughs> I know those guys. Hey, we're friends. Let's talk music oh, yeah. now. Well, he got me into my favorite band, Cody. Yes. So. Yes. You're welcome. Yeah. And yeah. Tuan got Dale into Coheed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, the past. <laughs> of the I got Tuan into Coheed. Yes. Just and like how into the mo, into and, Yes. Like we've all just like. You know, we're all like Eskimo brothers through music. Yeah. <laughs> and other things. Yes, and other things. <laughs> uh, I've, I've meant to mention that on air. 
I think that is one of the cool things about the music that we listen to. It is communal and you want to pass it on. Yes. I think anyway, right? Oh, I agree. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And I like that it's a smaller uh, group of people and it's not like the huge scene like that. It is pop and just everyone and their brother and mom and dad love Everybody's it. Everybody's like, got an opinion on it. You don't have to worry about all y- that. Yeah, right, right. Like you love metal. You just see that person. You have, have that connection. Like we're people. I like that. Yeah. And it, it's definitely a... Um, you know, passionate fan base, a passionate yes. group. And we've been enjoying, and I think you guys have as well, the Facebook group that we have going mm-hmm. on. We're getting posts every day. I'm, I'm hearing new bands I haven't heard, some I haven't heard in years, and then some yes. I haven't heard at all. Love all the yeah. people being active on that. That's oh, yeah. Great. Absolutely. Yeah. Share, share away on there. Yes. Appreciate that. So, Brandon Moses. Yes. Here's another odd fact. We used to be in a band together. We did. Yes. We did. A couple. A few. Uh, we were all right. Yeah. We were okay. We, we did okay. We had a little... Technically, well, we were in two bands together. Yes. Yeah. Far One, from yesterday. Oh, Micah, Micah yeah. and then oh, yeah. Miles. That's yeah. right. Yeah. 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 Dose. But any band that I've really ever, like, fully been a part of, I've been a part of with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And really, when me and you first met, I you were a great drummer from the day I met you. You know, you come from a musical family. Do you want to talk about that? Any? So both my uh, parents, uh, so on my mom's side, they're all singers. And on my dad's side, they're all musicians. So I got the best of both worlds. So just grew up in it. We were on the road till I was about four years old playing gospel music. And then uh, then I think they sold the sold the bus and then came home. And they, were, they were pretty popular, definitely in this area. And then maybe oh, yeah, you know, beyond a little bit. It's, the, it's the, the Waller uh, the family, right? Wallen family for Wallen. that. But the Ozarks were the more popular one on my dad's side. They're the ones that actually toured around the, the country. Awesome. Mm-hmm. So my mom's side were more based here in Missouri. Yeah. So. And your parents used to let us practice, and Dale's Dale's mom did as well. Yeah, Mama Chris, shout out. Yep, she let you guys, when Brandon lived with us, you guys would practice in the basement. Yeah, yeah my parents loved it, too. Yeah. They loved having us there. There's no way they loved it. No, well, they loved hearing it. They really did. They wouldn't True. have bought me all that shit. They didn't want me to play it. Right. Especially, True. especially yeah. my dad. Yeah. And, and I did appreciate, and I even told this, uh, you know, we've lost your dad, and, and uh, when your dad passed away, uh, I talked to your mom about this. I think maybe even at the funeral or after said, I always appreciated that you guys never came down and told us to, to turn it down. And we would, I'm sure those noises we were making were horrendous. Oh, yeah. back, especially then, because we were just starting out then. And there was no way we were that good. There was no way. No. And they'd no be way. like, you guys want to water? Everything all right? Yeah. You having fun? Yeah. Like just so open to it. Super cool. Always loved how much they supported you and supported us and your mom as well. You know, yeah. we played a style I, of music. I forgot that we practice at your mom's yeah. house i forgot all yeah about that. absolutely we did i didn't remember it until he said it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and like the music that you guys weren't playing wasn't you know like you know shania twain right so like for them not. for all the, the parents to be that cool it was it was a it was a neat experience and when we first started out it was mostly like what you would probably consider like rock or metal yeah uh but then we got weird we and, got uh, super fucking weird <laughs> and one of the bands that we're going to talk about tonight i think had a had a pretty big influence in that it might have been the main influence especially around that time yeah, yeah. and we're not going to tell you who that is but we're going to talk about a band that i know we're all fans of huge and fan is maybe putting it lightly i mean for me it is they are near the very top and i don't care what genre you know metal is just this huge umbrella but we're talking music in general they are pretty damn close to the top for me like slight obsession Yes. I love them so much. Random Moses, welcome to the barn. We're had to, well, we're, thanks for having me. This is Missouri. I know you don't see it much here, but <laughs> this is Missouri. Yes. Still, still cold. Still yeah, cold. And it misses very you. Fucking cold. Yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Tomorrow will be sixty four, Bub. So Yeah, that's true. There's that. We're not any kind of like uh, you know, West Coast hipster or whatever you're into. With I am your... I'm kinda of hippy dippy these days. So hippy dippy. You're right. <laughs> you guys uh you have no idea. You have no idea. <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're going to go to break. We are hydrated by liquid death. We're caffeinated by Black Bayou Coffee Roasters. And we're staying metal, right, Dale? Yes, absolutely. Stay we'll, metal. We'll be back right after this. Hey, it's Steve from 200 Stab. We're listen to Volga Display Podcast. The fucking guy. Hey there, this is Barrett from ATI Pod. Every week, Josh and I talk about what's going on in the world, what's entertaining, what's controversial, 
Nothing's out of bounds. Whether it's sports, current events, politics, TV, movies, you name it, we talk about it. We're going to have local artists on our show promoting their work. That's right, you're for the people, by the people. Stay tuned, and you can find us anywhere that you get your lovely, lovely, juicy, juicy audio content. We are now on broadcasting platforms such as Spotify and Stitcher. Stay in touch with us via social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Just search for ATI Pod. We'll see you around. And hey, stay safe out there. And we're back. <laughs> Larry's still out of work. <laughs> Larry's still out of work. Hope you enjoyed that commercial. <laughs> I'm going to run that joke as much as I can. Yes, yes. You know how you get a joke and it just it stays. You, you just want more of it. <laughs> Dude, my old boss from the prison, he worked. I worked under him in the prison, is friends with me on Facebook, and he keep, he's listening. He likes older rock. And he's listened to every episode, and he he knows my first name's Larry, and he kept thinking it was me, and finally was like, "Dude, it's not me." <laughs> oh, okay. I was off work officially. He's like, "Okay, well, I ran that joke as Last far as I could." Times not me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so I thought that was funny as fuck. We mentioned in the first segment how we used to play in bands together, and uh, you know, I remember just being so passionate about it and just wanting to do it. Sort of like with this, when I get into something, I really get into it. But I remember. We live in uh, an hour outside of this area, St. Louis, right? Where we're from, there's not a there wasn't, especially around that time, a whole lot of venues. So we would play, we would we would load up the van or truck or whatever we had, and we would play house parties all and time. like you're mm-hmm. talking about, even practicing in basements, but even like all kinds of venues. One of our best of- shows was in our basement, in my dad's basement. Yes, yeah, yeah. that was fun. I remember Adam Jones over there headbanging next to you while you're <laughs> yes. playing uh, uh, apostrophe. Yeah, remember that song. Yeah, and then random people would jump on instruments, and you guys would cover "Walk" by Pantera. Oh yeah, yeah. amazing. Like my sister would yeah, play maybe. drums. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We yeah. do 30 seconds of walk, and we did it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Play walk, motherfucker. <laughs> we could play all the way up to the solo, mm. and then I'd have a guitar <laughs> string issue or something. <laughs> uh, but we had a lot of fun, and we would play anything and everything, and mm-hmm. as much as we could. You know, we were kind of lucky to. So we had a we had a spot, and it's going to sound weird to people that that's not a, from this area and that's not aware. But we had a basically a campground to ourselves. It was fucking dope. It was so dope. Yeah, for, an, for an entire winter. And we yes. were like young, yeah, looking 19, shitheads. 20, 20 year olds yes. there. I mean, nothing to lose. Yeah. And it was me and my buddy who worked there, but we got paid to stay there overnight mm-hmm. uh, or not even overnight, but like, you know, just live there basically and make sure no, nobody would break into anything. Uh, meanwhile, we were breaking into everything. <laughs> <laughs> no one to throw parties. We'll throw the biggest fucking bangers. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we had some fucking bangers. Uh, some of the best times of my life. Yeah. But you can imagine being, and I know you guys can, but you can imagine being 22 and 23 and having a whole campground kind of out in the country or at least mm-hmm. out of town and uh, having it to yourself. Like I said, there wasn't a whole lot of venues, so we would put our own shows on. All the time. We'd get a couple kegs, charge a a stamp to get in. Back in a flatbed trailer. Load up, boys. Yeah. Use all that money to buy new equipment. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Great. I remember one time my buddy hadn't paid. So we still had to pay a little bit of rent to stay there, Mm -hmm. even though we were kind of working for him. We paid your rent? Not mine. (laughs) Not mine. (laughs) My buddy. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, was behind on rent, so we just like, hey, let's throw a kegger and we'll rent pay party. pay for rent all summer uh, or whatever yeah. it was. Yeah, and fights would break out, and I mean, and I mean, the I most... got into a fight at one of the keggers myself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so many people from like all out outlooks of life would just show up. It'd be a different crowd every time, and it was it blast. really was a different Dude, crowd it, every single mm-hmm. time. You'd have like the classy broads, and then you'd have like the shitheads, and then the punks, and then the true like metal fans and friends of the band. It was like, who are these people? Okay, yeah. there's keg beer, let's drink. Great times. I still sometimes will get from old where we used to live in the town. If you go to a certain bar or something, run in somebody you haven't seen in a while, and they'll still talk about some of those times. So, yeah, nice. yeah we would throw keggers. One of the funniest things I've ever witnessed in my entire life, we were throwing a, a, a show, I guess. We had other bands, too. Yeah, like Brad and the boys, like we was talking. Yeah, Brad's yeah, yeah, our yeah, age was yeah, there. Yeah, our yeah. age, yeah. Shout out to the our, our age boys. <laughs> and uh, we talked about Mike Haley and brother Doug. Yes, Doug, yeah. And, and uh, Chuck and even Danny King. And, and uh, yeah, we're talking all these old times. But anyway, so we were throwing a show inside of the cabin on the campground. <laughs> Oops. 
like, well, there's a lot of people there and everybody's kind of having fun and jumping around and there was kind of like beers being thrown and yeah. it was kind of wild, but it started getting, re- it was mid- probably middle of the summer, po- close to it, started getting really hot in the cabin. Well, behind Brandon, Brandon's playing drums, mm-hmm. I'm playing guitar, behind Brandon, there was a screen door. Well, he yeah. opened the screen door to try to get some air in because we were so hot and sweating. Yeah. I might even say, hey, open that door. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, he opens the door and the crowd kind of starts getting pushed up a little bit more. And I look back and he's in the middle of a beat and he falls out of not only the door, <laughs> out of the fucking house, but out of the house, <laughs> completely he's out of the house. drumming on the way to the ground. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> and we finished the show though. Yeah. So. <laughs> right. yeah. Show must go on. <laughs> and I've always said that about you and your drumming. I loved your drumming because it makes uh, you fall out of people's houses. Yes, yeah, yes, yes. You rock so hard, you <laughs> yes, fall out of houses. Fell out of a house. Did Lars ever I, do that? No. <laughs> <laughs> that show was a lot of fun because it was like a fucking uh, video, like a rock video, where you mm-hmm. see these uh, bands playing in these house shows and stuff, and everybody's jumping, having a great time. And yeah. That shit really happens. That yes, find it out. Was real. Even yeah. when you don't get paid for it. Yeah, it's I not do, just a director. I do remember that everybody was jumping and I could feel the floor yeah. not just yeah. move. It was like an earthquake. Like yeah. it was like about to give way. Yeah, it, right. it wasn't safe, but it was no. fun. No, none of it. We was kept safe. going. I mean, I fell out of the house once. So yeah. It wasn't very safe. <laughs> Obviously not safe. <laughs> but Chad, you were saying, oh, you always say about his drumming that. Yes. Proceed. It sucks. It's terrible. <laughs> Go back to Oregon. No, it, what I, I always hate your birthday. Wow. You guys are really mean. Wow. Well, Welcome. They, they also want to take that to, yeah. to the extreme. I take we, it back. It's we, called we, vulgar. Can all we right? edit that out? Can you guys just be mean? <laughs> uh, what I really always enjoyed about your drumming was it seems like you never played uh, the same song the same way twice. Never. Like, I still don't do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you would always kind of change it up. And being a guitar player, me and you wrote a lot of this mm-hmm. wrote wrote that way where it was oh, mostly yeah. just me and you a lot of a lot of times it was just me and you so we really had to kind of be in tune together and i felt like mm-hmm. we were oh yeah big time. but when you change it up every every show or every <laughs> practice or no, whatever it was pretty much every time we played the song whatever song it was i yeah. probably played it a little bit differently yeah. like oh that's the title of the song i'm gonna play this hold on i still have that problem today <laughs> even on piano and guitar yeah oh, it doesn't matter you just get bored easy or something i think so i don't know <laughs> i think part of it i have bad short-term memory so i just forget what i play and then also, um, I'm not very good. So there's also that. <laughs> you just like to add a little extra spice. Eh? <laughs> I'm going to no, change this up. You're being super humble. You are one of the best drummers well, I've ever That's played right. with. You're yeah. the only drum I ever played with. But uh, <laughs> Take uh, that last part back. <laughs> you're, you're one of, and we talked about it uh, a couple episodes ago yeah. when we had Brad Sexton on about drumming and, and about how you two were kind of two of the most popular drummers or two of uh, the most uh, recognized drummers in the area as mm-hmm. being two of the best but very different styles where I think Brad was so like super regimented and almost like a machine. Yeah, he was like, mm-hmm. machine. you were a little bit of a, like a, you let's, know, let's be honest. Like he was a st- couple steps ahead of me though. <laughs> I'm gonna... well, he probably is now. Yeah. Well, definitely now. Yeah. But even back then he was, I mean, yeah, but he, also, was, he was up there, man. Like he was saying though, your styles were different. Oh, they so were he is great different. in his way and you're great in yeah, your way. I remember they asked me to play with Dress for a Funeral and I just couldn't keep up with Brad and his drumming. There's no way. I don't ever, I don't think I ever played that show with him because I realized I wasn't near yeah. as good as him. Yeah. yeah. And he's, somebody was asking about him the other day after, after we did the podcast. And I was like, he's not only a good drummer for this area, he's a fucking, oh, he's professionally good. He yes, is professionally a, an yeah. amazing drummer. Right. And that episode was a lot of fun. Yes. Oh, yeah, uh, it was a good one. But, yeah, again, what I always appreciated about your drumming is you never played the same way twice, so I had to really be in tune with you, which was cool because mm-hmm. I felt like we would lock, we would be locked in. Oh, yeah. But I would see you, and I'm sure these guys too, you drop a stick and keep playing and then fall out of a house and keep <laughs> yeah. playing and drunk as shit, keep playing. Yeah. Break a head, snare head, keep playing. Yeah, 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 all those things. Or you'd forget a, you'd forget a piece of your drum or something, and it's just, yeah. it, it, it kept you on your toes, right. and, and it was a little bit of rock and roll. You yeah, know, in a way, it's kind of that rock and roll sense. You never knew what you were yeah. getting. Right. Yeah, yeah, you really didn't. You really didn't know what you're gonna get from me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think even we were like that in a way. People would say, "Man, that show was awesome." And yeah, then every show, from show to show, was different. We never had the same thing twice. Never. And then you'd play the show, and you'd be at the bar, and like nobody's looking, you, looking at you in the eye. Yeah. Like trying to avoid eye contact. You're like, I don't think that went so well. No, I don't think they liked us what, very what, much. Wasn't a good night. Right. No, it wasn't because it didn't go well. It went so good. It was like, I can't even look her in the eye right now. Like uh, stepbrothers. Yeah. Like, God, they're so good. Yeah. That's gotta <laughs> That's be it. It was. Surely it was that. Yes. <laughs> but man, we used to have a lot of fun. Any shows that stick out or any 
Any of those old times kind of stick out to you in your memory? Anything? That, yeah, uh, I, uh, I was just thinking about this. It was actually a Far From Yesterday show at the Rock House. It was the one where uh, Micah crowd surfed, and it was that huge crowd, one of the bigger crowds they had at Rock House at that time. And I remember we had stickers. I remember throwing them into the crowd, and everybody going crazy over it. And it was that was probably one of my favorite shows, yeah. honestly. And I was there. You were there. I think you were there. He yeah. doesn't remember that at all. Yeah. What you you to say. Sounds yeah, awesome. Sounds it's great. I do remember yeah, fun. when you threw those stickers. And Rock House music. <laughs> he threw the stickers you were trying to sell? Yeah. yeah. Those are $3 a piece, mother. <laughs> yeah, no oh, kidding. That's what those were for. Yeah. My bad. Get on wildnessinvestors.com. <laughs> there is a video. Twan, Twan used to have a video cor recorder in and, mm -hmm. and, and the old school where we weren't on our phones all the time. And he'd record record a lot of different things but I remember seeing a video one time where it's the end of the set and I'm an idiot knucklehead and I throw something on your you know I watched Nirvana or something where Kurt would jump into Dave's drum set or whatever <laughs> I think I threw a water bottle at your drum set oh, when yeah. the show was over and you get up and you're pissed and you, <laughs> you I don't even know what it was a stick or something because I had kind of walked off stage and you were like chucking chuck it right back at him <laughs> yeah that sounds like me yeah. yeah I don't remember that but that sounds yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> sounds right <laughs> One of the funniest ones that I remember involves you, Tuan. Uh, we opened for Dead to Fall, which was a popular popular hardcore band, especially around that time, yeah. and uh, down in Springfield, Missouri. We were the opener, but that didn't stop us from drinking like we were in, in Megadeth or something. <laughs> Fucking Metallica. Right? Yeah. Oh, Motley Crue coming through. Oh, no shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they were pissed, too. Oh, yeah. man. Oh, yeah. Impressions weren't You impressions already have your made. beer. You guys have drank your beer. I remember that guy saying that. Yeah. You drank your beer. You're done. <laughs> We were the opener, and usually the opener is the local. Yeah. We weren't even the local. Yeah, no. three hours away. <laughs> we had no, yeah. Yeah. no business even being on no, that no. show. <laughs> but the promoter goes and buys, you know, these big, huge uh, coolers full of beer, mm -hmm. and they have them backstage. Well, we're, the, we're on the show. <laughs> yeah. That shit's for us, <laughs> That's right? my name on that flyer. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Well, we thought so anyway. You know, it wasn't just one of us. We were handing them out, too. Like, we won the beer lottery or something. Yeah, because we went through our uh, lotted uh, beer pretty quickly. And it was mostly yeah. you at that time, I think. Yeah. He was like the Oprah of beer. You get a beer. Yeah. You get a beer. Yeah. It was all Chad. Yep. Yeah, it was all Chad that day. <laughs> Not snitching or nothing, but it was Chad. And I don't know how well we did at that show either, because I remember the drummer of Dead to Fall after the show said to me, he goes, hey, that's a nice kit, man. Just said nice kit about my drum set. Didn't say anything else about the show. Just said my kit was nice. You didn't play it well, but it's a nice yeah, kit. Yeah, you didn't say anything about my playing or our playing or yeah. any song in particular. Just my drum set. So A little bit like this. We had fun, though. We acted yeah. a little bit bigger than what we actually were, but yeah. hey, it's <laughs> the appearance, like right? Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Fake it till you make it. So, yeah, part of that, the beer thievery was that guy there too don't don't let him get you wrong twan yeah. plays innocent and coy <laughs> that's, what, that's why i said yeah it was all chad. all chad it was all chad that did that so we're just hammering the beers backstage like we're king dicks or whatever <laughs> and then you know we play our set and then maybe a couple other bands play their sets and then dead to fall play well we're in this kind of backstage area but you're really we were on like the side of the stage where you yeah. can see like the side side view of the stage me and twan are sitting there face drunk and everybody's you know everywhere at the bar whatever titty bar whatever yeah. and uh me and twan just sitting there watching the band and we were fucking wasted and twan i don't know if you remember this or not but some lady brought shots over shots like jaeger. jaeger shots yeah yum, yum like jaeger shots they brought them over and set them right in front of us but it was for dead to fall <laughs> yeah not in our eyes no no they were sat in front of us yes thank, thank you man you. <laughs> thank you very much thank you <laughs> So yeah, we do deserve that. these. We yeah. do deserve these. Yes, ma'am. I'll have another. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we were that good tonight. We were that good. We get a whole fucking tray of shots. Yes, you're welcome. <laughs> so at this point, we're probably 12 to 15 beers deep anyway. Yeah. And then you see those Jaeger shots. And no, wonder, no wonder we never got invited back. To <laughs> no, we never. <laughs> well, the funny thing is, is we actually pick them up and we start taking the shots. Well, the lady who bought them at the bar sees us doing it and she's waving us down frantically going, no, 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 no. They're for them. <laughs> And she turns around, and what does she do? She buys us shots anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Seems a little counterproductive. Yeah. No. Well, I mean, it worked. Yeah. Sorry for partying. For me, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Any other stories you can think of? Um, I don't know if you want to. Chicago. Chicago, the mini oh, tour, Chicago, the yeah. Ohio, and all that. That was that a blast. That mini tour was Autumn probably off. one of the funnest five days of my life. Yes. Especially coming back and ending at the Rock House like we did. That yeah. Was, uh, yeah. That was fun. That was a crazy was trip, fun, man. I was a little hungover. 
I was, of, I was a lot hungry. I think like sleep the whole uh, yes, and very sleep deprived. Sleeping on that damn hardwood floor with oh, yeah. loudest music. So yeah, we we kind of put a, together a little mini tour. I mm -hmm. think it started in St. Louis. We had St. Louis gig, and then we had a Chicago gig, mm -hmm. and Dayton. then Dayton. and then Dayton, Ohio, was a music death metal festival. fest. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, we probably a... didn't deserve to be on. Uh, no, legit fest. That was that was badass. And then we came back to our hometown. So it was like four dates in a row mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah, that's the one that I passed out on the way. We talked about getting beer on the way home. Yeah, <laughs> and I said, "Yeah, we're gonna road trip all the way home." And yeah. I passed out before we got out of you. Ohio. Road trip to the gas station. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> woke up in Missouri. Yes, I did. And these assholes made me drive the race west Ray home after I, I woke up and hungover. Yeah. Oh, poor you. You slept for four hours. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was tired. <laughs> I was sleepy. I was a sleepy guy. <laughs> uh, we had a lot of good, good fun back yes, then, man, for sure. Oh yeah, and I left uh, my symbols in Chicago. Oh, that was partly your fault, but that's all right. Oh yeah, I'll take oh. the weight for that. Just like how Chad quote stole the beer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll take the weight. It, looking back at that time, it seemed like every every stop we went to, we were rushed for some reason or another. <laughs> it did yeah, feel that, that way. when we got to Ohio, and we never were actually rushed. We weren't. No. <laughs> we just felt like we had to get to the next stop. Yeah. Yes, because we're on tour. <laughs> <laughs> this is how it goes. But I remember we were in Dick's van with the rest of his band stuff, shit or whatever, and his drum equipment. And you guys beat us there, so like they're supposed, to, you guys are supposed to be starting, and Chad just like strumming his guitar, mm -hmm. and we're legit walking with Brandon's drum equipment, like you're supposed to already be playing. And Chad's like, "Yeah, this is our intro." And I called you on the way there, saying, I go, "You're gonna have to talk to somebody there and get me some symbols because we're <laughs> they, late. If not, we're not gonna be able to play." Yes, if they were. They were pissy. Yeah. yeah, they were not nice about me yeah, borrowing they, the symbols. Brad was Brad was trying to uh, put together your drum set before oh, you got yeah. there for you. That's right. And he didn't have a drum key or something like that, and he was having he was struggling. And that fucking guy, what do you? Or how is this your first show? You got to get this together. <laughs> and Brad your was like, first tour, sir. First tour. <laughs> this is your first tour. It's actually our third show in three days. Wise ass, but okay. <laughs> And there was something to that, that we had to, one of us had to be there to represent the band on a certain time or something, because I do remember me and you, me and Tuan, yep. leaving mm -hmm. earlier than everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. Way we earlier left, than we left the hotel, because we, we left Chicago and for some reason decided, hey, we don't have to be there until three o'clock the next day. Let's drive all night. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Why would we just stay the night in Chicago? I don't know. <laughs> We were not smoking. We didn't have to be there until like I think afternoon or something like that. But it was a hell of a drive. Yeah, that we had to long. make. But oh, we were in Chicago two nights because oh, yeah, the we first were. night yeah, Duna just, Hill played. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then the next night you guys played with Duna. Yeah, yes. They played at that church right down yeah. the street yeah, yeah, from yeah, their yeah, house. Yeah, yeah. That the house we stayed in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good times, God, boys. Yeah. yeah, that was fun. A lot of yeah. fun. And uh, when we come back, we were going to talk about uh, favorite venues. You know, in our first or second episode, we talked about. Our favorite shows in a smaller club, medium-sized club, and a bigger club. This time, venues. Mm -hmm. But there's a, there's a caveat to that because we're from the St. Louis area and we've been to so many venues at the same shows and same venues. We decided to open it up. We're not picking St. Louis venues on this. Right. When we come back after this break, we're going to talk venues. You guys good with that? Great. So good. All right. We'll be back after this. Hey, this is Marcus from Theftuous. This is Matt from Into the Moat. John Donay, Anthrax, Shadow Swall. And you are listening to Dale, Twan, and Chad on the Vulgar Display of Podcasts. Vulgar Display of Podcasts. Vulgar Display of Podcasts. On the Vulgar Display of Podcasts. <laughs> Black Bayou Coffee Roasters, based out of Streetport, Louisiana, but also shipping nationwide, is now offering 13 single coffee origins, 20 different coffee blends, and over 75 different flavors. Black Bayou Coffee Roasters' slogan is, life is too short to drink shit coffee. So be sure to visit blackbayoucoffeeroasters.com and use the coupon VULGAR and get your 10% off of your order today. Again, be sure to use the coupon code VULGAR at blackcoffeeroasters.com and receive 10% off your order. Be sure to tell them that the boys of Vulgar Display Podcast sent you. Break down, drink, stay caffeinated, and stay metal, baby.
Welcome back to the Vulgar Display of Podcasts. We missed you. We missed <laughs> Fellas, we've been to a lot of shows. Between the four of us, I think we hit 1,000. Oh, yeah. Easy. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Just between the two of you guys. Probably. Yeah, probably <laughs> you and Tuan alone. I know I've been over to a few hundred, so I can imagine you guys have doubled mine. Been to a lot. Don't go to as much as, anymore. I have three kids and a you know, career and all that. And now you got me, so like four kids. Yeah. <laughs> I still go to a lot. Yeah. 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 My brother, Matt, told me, he goes, every time I go to a show, guess who I see? Every single time. You have Tuan. Yeah. Tuan, every time. Does he? Yeah. And he never says hi. He doesn't. Yeah, evidently. Because I, mean, I, like, I never he, see him. He left that part out of the story. Yeah, he yeah. did. <laughs> Tell him to say hi. Yeah. So we've seen a lot. Yes. Venues. Yes. You like them? I what do like them. Yeah. When they, they host okay, shows. So not, so all right. <laughs> never had an issue. Favorite venue? Outside of St. Louis. Outside of St. Louis. We're talking favorite venue, no matter the size, no matter Anything. specifics, other than outside of St. Louis. What's what's your favorite venue you've ever been to? Uptown Theater, Kansas City, hands down. Ah, I've been there. Love that place. Great place. Lovely place. It's like the inside is like an old style church-ish look to it. Got the beautiful little pillars and stuff. You would not think that you would go in there and see like bring me the horizon and let live and of mice and men type of shows in it so and that's beautiful who you yes. saw yes yes and then i believe i was with josh and emily lubers and we saw it was called a night with coheed coheed and cambry and it was just them they did like 14 original songs like seven acoustic and then their first album beginning and end oh nice. yeah, yeah it was, it was like three and a half hours of coheed yeah that was the night Man. i met claudio got pictures on the old facebook face google space to prove it yeah, and it was in that Uptown Theater. That was the first time I went, and we stayed right there at the jury next to it. Beautiful, beautiful setup. One of my favorite, if not my favorite venues. Yeah, so that's a, a little bit bigger than a mid-sized club, I would say. Is yeah. that an accurate Yeah, it is. It's like a Stiffel Theater-esque, maybe a little bigger. It's got, like, more of the floor room. Bigger? Yeah, I would think so, because it's got more really? floor room. I think so, yeah. More floor area, and then, the state, like, the seating towards the back. Kansas City, stand up. Yes. <laughs> We're rocking. Yes. And if somebody Lovely. else picked it. Venue in Kansas City. No. I would know about it. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Not the same one, though. Different one. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. We'll, we'll hear about that later. Yeah. <laughs> With my seven <laughs> favorite out of state all venues. The <laughs> yeah, all the runner ups. <laughs> my next time we'll mention, like, dude, Chad, it's Sunday, yeah, bro. No shit. <laughs> Town Theater in Kansas yes. City. Yeah. Right. Yep. That's a good one. Very nice. So I've actually been it there and inside of it, but I didn't see a show there mm -hmm. in a in a weird way. Right. Uh, one of my Kansas City trips for work, I, I went by it's there. neat. Like I said, it's got like an old churchy vibe to it. Like it's just like a nifty place, like a theater. Yeah. yeah. And then to see heavy metal roll in there, so <laughs> and, much fun. And it's a different part of Kansas City. It's kind of in a neat little area yeah. outside of Kansas City. Yeah. Uh, yeah, good one. Uptown Theater, Kansas City. Stand yeah. up. Thank yes. you. Shout out. Yeah. Tuan, what about you? So mine is actually an amphitheater. Um, and it's uh, Glen Helen Amphitheater in San Bernardino, California. Oh, big timer. I've been Ooh. there twice. Um, both were not fests. And just the landscaping alone around the venue is beautiful. You're listening to all these good bands, and there's mountains behind them. Oh, cool. Um, even, like, uh, when it, the night time finally came, uh, they actually had a, a spotlight that shined on one of the mountains in the back. Oh, wow. And it was Slipknot's logo. All the oh, way wow. 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 And it was huge, right? Um, and that venue was really, really cool. Just picturesque type scenarios. And um, uh, they kind of somewhat don't give a fuck about the venue either. Because um, <laughs> I remember I looked back and there were just all these fires in the lawn. What? Just some kind of code there they're breaking them. Yeah, did Moby I mean, come in and stop everything? <laughs> no, he didn't. I don't think anybody stopped him. I'm shocked. Because I remember me and with his uh, cuddle puddles and his yeah <laughs> me and timmy were sitting there and tim almost got sick because of the smell because they were burning the trash cans mm. as part of what they were burning and then they would just start throwing everything on it but there's tons of these little bonfires out in the middle of the lawn which i thought was really strange but a uh, beautiful place but kind of cool too very cool yep and that's what was the name of it again glenn helen amphitheater nice so if you're ever in that area check that one out that one sounds cool I like that Especially how the, that the backdrop. Yeah, absolutely. You're getting a visual of the stage and the vans, and then that. That's pretty dope. Yeah, that'd be cool. What about you, Moses? Mine is also an amphitheater. It's up in Bellevue, Washington. I saw a Mastodon. Mm. Uh, Every time I die in Coheed up there, it's called Mary Moore. And 
it, it's not great and as far as like the <clears throat> the scenery and everything just the setup though they had there was perfect and maybe it was just the fact that i saw coheed there and every yeah time yeah they can make anything that, that's a they, hell of a lineup yeah, yeah exactly oh my gosh yeah and they had all these food trucks set up and it was just a perfect perfect setup so yeah i think that's part of it too they're catching the right vibe mm -hmm. right crowd right band oh, it was a great great crowd too yeah. food trucks mm -hmm. Yeah, and food trucks. Yeah, that. yeah. So we're we're hitting all over. So we'll say the name of the place again. Uh, the Mary Moore in Bellevue, Mary Washington. Moore. Bellevue, Washington. Nice. We'll check that out if we're in that area. Mine is also Kansas City. Woo woo. And it's not really a metal club. I don't think metal acts play there. But I saw Parker Millsap. He's kind of an alternative country mm -hmm. guy. I don't know what it is. I've heard the name. Yeah. But yeah, so it's it's this place called Knuckleheads, and there's a picture of it. Oh. Right, right there. <laughs> <laughs> Look with your eyes. It is the coolest club i've ever been to nice. so i go to this place uh and again i was in town for work mm -hmm. so i was just looking for something to do and i and i know parker Millsap, and i was i'm a fan of his i was like well shit, i'll go to that you know perfect timing so i'm there by myself go there and and walk in and it's tiny it's literally the size of this barn here i'm like holy cow how are they going to get people into this place you know well i grab a beer and i see people walking in and they just keep walking through that room to a different room and I'm like, what's going on here? So I walk into that other room and I actually walk outside and it's an outdoor venue. Uh -oh. it's, it's all encapsulated. Oh, that's awesome. But it's an outdoor venue with outdoor seating, but it's, it's all kind of in a circle. It's all kind of there. So I was like, holy cow, that was super cool. And then it's really hard to explain and describe what it's like being there. But uh, when I went to the bathroom, walked back through to the other room and then I walked, there was like the bathroom's over there. Well, then I had to walk through a store then I walk through another venue and another venue. I think they have four like stages and areas where they host shows, even at the same time sometimes. Mm -hmm. So they'll have a super small show going on in here and then the bigger one outside. And then it's amazing. Just, it was cool, man. That's awesome. Knuckleheads in Kansas City. And it's on the other side of the river. So you have to, might be in Kansas actually. It says Missouri. Yeah, it says Missouri. It says Missouri on the flyer. Super cool. Knuckleheads in Kansas City. Love the name, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Knuckleheads. I'd be yeah. down to that. And there's murals, and you have to check it out. It's, it's really unique, really cool. And, and it was it was the right van, uh, band and crowd. Uh, there's actually a train uh, tracks that run right by it. So Parker's up there playing, and he hears and sees this train go by, and he, like, acknowledges it. And it's just super cool. So uh, great, great club. Knuckleheads in Kansas City. Nice. Love it. But I had to have one more. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> this fucking guy. Yeah, dang. I got to work tomorrow, bub. <laughs> Not a metal one either, but Red Rocks Amphitheater. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. yeah. On my bucket yes. list. Yeah, Definitely. same here. Yeah. Definitely on my bucket list. You know, we might as well do it. It is It is kind of the club that everybody wants to see. Something yeah. Like yeah. That, right? yeah. It's got the big rocks or whatever. So we went out, and I don't even know who we saw. But it just uh, doesn't matter, really. Yeah, you were super there. Super cool. And, and seats way more than what you would think really a ton of people wow. really like Would at least five thousand, maybe wow. even more oh okay. wow see i yeah. thought it was a teeny no okay it's big nice super cool so if you're ever in denver colorado or morrison colorado a little bit a little south of of denver you gotta check out red rocks yes yeah, like one said to, bucket yeah. list yeah oh my gosh yeah how many more you got <laughs> <laughs> you want us to just hang out while you take a call or yeah big yeah. shot over there getting a text from 200 stab wounds or something <laughs> Who was it, Max? It's not 200, no, it's, it's Max. Max. My fault. My fault. <laughs> it's not all 200. <laughs> it's, not it's only 198 stab wounds. It's not all 200 of them. Oh, fuck. What the hell's going on here? It's Crank Acres. <laughs> hey, fellas. What's up, buddy? Micah. Hey, Micah. Hey. How's it going? Mooka pooka moo woo. In the, in the voice. Okay. Okay. Got it. Okay. Got it. Yeah. In the voice. In the voice. <laughs> Not in the flesh. <laughs> Micah Poga Miller. Nice. That was Brandon's. Glad to be here. That Glad was Brandon's here. birthday surprise. Can you hear all of us? Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Micah Poga Miller. I think you've been brought up on this podcast more than maybe even anybody. <laughs> mm -hmm. yep. other, other than that delicious liquid death water. Yes. <laughs> Other than them, it's been Micah. Uh, you guys staying caffeinated? <laughs> hydrated and metal. Yes. Hydrated, caffeinated, and metal, my friend. How about you? Nice. Nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Same thing. Metal. Metal all day. Metal all day. <laughs> you don't even drink coffee yeah. or water. You're just metal, huh? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the infamous, infamous Micah Poga Miller. Micah, uh, I thought I'd surprise the fellas with you. Nice surprise. We kind of set this up a little bit. 
I like it. Yeah. Uh, Cause we have Brandon yeah. Moses here. You remember that guy? I do. <laughs> I definitely do. <laughs> but what's I, up Brandon? What's up man? All right, Re good talk. Yeah. <laughs> love you, bye. Do it again right, in a year. Love you, bye. Yep. United and it feels so good. So we mentioned this on the podcast. Micah lives in Milwaukee. You just heard his uh, interview with H1Z1 that we released on Wednesday. And next week, you're going to hear his interview with Ancient Entities. Michael, we appreciate you doing that for us. Was that a good show? Yeah, awesome show. Uh, awesome show. Awesome talking with the bands, too. Everybody was open, receptive, fun. Just made it real easy for us, just hanging out, talking. So, yeah, yeah, it's awesome to hear those back, too. Yeah, those were great. Uh, we appreciate you doing that. We're going to set up some more stuff in the future, too, trying to get this metal out there, baby, and get the message mm -hmm. out there. Metalheads out there listening, and we want to, um, you know, kind of talk about some old times because that's been a lot of fun is, is rehashing a little bit of the past and mm -hmm. thinking about some of these bands I haven't thought about in a while and, and seeing some of my old friends friends that we used to drink a lot of beer and shoot Jaegers with yes. but uh yes uh, and Micah's definitely on that list so we appreciate you from Milwaukee Micah dude I appreciate you yeah yep but I also wanted to surprise the guys with you because of the topic that we're going to talk about have you ever heard of the band Glassjaw <laughs> um I, I believe I have yeah 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 <laughs> Glassjaw is the band we're talking about tonight woo 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 we talked about when we did the tool episode being a layup Right. Yes. Even, and I think the tool episode ran like an hour and 20 or something. Yeah. A little over an hour, I believe. Could have been four hours if yes. you ask me. Yeah. I mean, people would have tuned out, but. <laughs> right. But us, we'd have still had a blast. Yeah. yeah we would have kept talk. Yes. And the running joke is, you know, we're doing this podcast stuff now, but these are the conversations that we would be having anyway. Right. Yep. Regardless of the microphones yeah. and the laptop. Yeah. We, we just put it, you keep bringing up the laptop. Yeah. Cause you're the guy. You're Johnny Mox. <laughs> you're the quarterback. I only had one honorable <laughs> mention tonight. He's, he's got you're the quarterback the now, Mox. <laughs> He definitely does. Yeah, so all these... I don't want your life. I don't want your life. <laughs> all these conversations that we have would happen anyway. Right. Just regardless. now Now there's a couple mics in front of her, in yeah. front of our faces. Yeah. Uh, so Glassjaw, I know you guys are fans. Yes. As I said earlier, it's like a slight obsession. Like that's a band that will stick with me the rest of my life from day one that I heard them till forever. Them. Can't get enough. Seen them a few times? Yes. Handful of times. Great every time. Uh, like four times. Told you I met Daryl one time at a snow core with hot mop, hot water music, and I had a glass jaw shirt on. I said, dude, let me get your autograph. He grabbed a Sharpie and scribbled a bunch of nonsense on my shirt and walked off. Had on these weird bug eye glasses. I was like, I'll take that. Like, I'll, take it. <laughs> I'll take the scribbles. <laughs> glass jaw for you, Tuan. We saw them for the first time together mm. at that Deftone show. Yes. Uh, we talked about that before on another uh, podcast. Yes. My God. Mm -hmm. How intense. Mm -hmm. Live. That was the one, if you remember me talking about, where he actually knocked himself out with the microphone. Yeah. yeah. And this was before really anybody knew who Glassjaw was. Mm -hmm. And we barely knew. I think we had a couple songs from a sampler or something. But when we seen that, I mean, I was blown. I was instantly a fan from yes. that moment on and have been yep. since. Yep, absolutely. That's how I was not to cut either one of you off. Uh, but when I showed up at a Warp Tour and you were there, of course, and it was nine in the morning, yep. no one had started. Everybody was just kind of walking around, still coming in the gate. And he's like, you want to pay attention to these guys. And like third song in, Daryl's hanging himself with the mic cord. I'm like, all right, I'm sold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sold. And Moses, you've seen him. I know you've seen him with us in Memphis. Yeah, that was a great show. It was. Um, I just remember when you told me about them back in, that was probably 2000, maybe. maybe No, no, it had to have been 2002 because I didn't know you until then. But anyways, um, when you first told me about them and just the name Glassjaw kind of sold me right away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then the first time I heard them, I just remember thinking how different it was that first time hearing them. And still to this day, there's no other band that sounds like them. Michael, what about you? I know you've seen them as well. Yeah, I've seen him a couple times. Um, one that stands out, I'm going to have to check with the historian, Tuan. Um, mm -hmm. I think we saw him at Mississippi Nights. Did they play with Converge? Or yeah, I, I was at that, that show, up? too. That, yeah. that, that was at the Galaxy. Galaxy. They played Mississippi okay. Nights with Piebald. It was a snow core tour or something like that. But the yes, one he's talking I about is uh, Con Converge and, and Glassjaw at the Galaxy. Okay. The one I saw that him was, was there. brutal. That brutal. That lineup. Yeah, great times. Yeah. Great yeah. times there. Yeah. yeah, if I was constructing a show even right now in 2022, yes. I, those two might be on a list. <laughs> yeah, and it'd <laughs> right. sell out in minutes, like people would yep. show. So I remember seeing them at Mississippi Nights with like the Juliana Theory and Piebald. Yeah, that was... That's the that, show. That that was, that's the show that I was at, not the Converge. That yeah. one, I went to that one, was amazing. And they were, you know, a little bit heavier than the other bands that played that mm -hmm. night. 
which I was okay with. Yes, <laughs> bring the heavy. I actually do like some Juliana Theory, but uh, that show was nice. And I'm sure we went there for for Glassjaw. Yeah. Oh yeah. Big fans. We're all we're yes. all big fans, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Many props. I gave you guys. Can a little... I share a story? Yes, sir. Yes. Story time. Okay, so you know how you have those really vivid memories, um, you know, things that stick out, you can just relive it. Um, I've got one of those with the glass, John. It's not at a show, it's about listening. It seems like I have all these great moments, especially with you guys listening to music that I have memories of. Sure. But I definitely have a vivid memory. Um, our late buddy Dick used to drive us around in the van, right? Yes. You know, he always he would always take all of us. We'd be partying, and, you know, he didn't drink, and he took care of us. And I definitely have a vivid memory. I don't know where we were going, going to a show, you know, around St. Francis County somewhere. And we were just blaring piano. And hopefully you edit that in, by the way. Uh, just blaring <laughs> piano. I think Moses was there. I just have oh, a yeah. super vivid memory of just like one of those, this is the greatest song ever, you yeah. know, <laughs> one this of those is my life right in now. Dick's van. Yeah. Yeah. In Dick's van, just screaming top of our lungs. Um, I can relive that anytime, just like it was yesterday. Man, me too. Yeah. I don't know if I was there, but even you <laughs> talking about that just brings back so many memories for me. Can you hear that? Yeah, I definitely heard that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Good times. I listened to that song today. <laughs> oh, yes. Me too. And this is one when I, when we talked about what episode we wanted to do and what band we wanted to talk about when we started. When we picked Last Jaw, mm -hmm. it's, one of, it's the Tool thing again, man. Like yes. I haven't listened to Tool that heavily. And then we did the episode, and I'm all about Tool. Yes. So here comes Glass Jaw for the next two yep. weeks. Yep. Yep. It's until on my way home from work today. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. That's why I listened to all the way down here today. <laughs> So it gave you a little little bit of a, a homework assignment. We just all picked one glass jaw song. Mm -hmm. So we never usually we like to do the threes, but this time it's just one. And that was harder for me. And I'm not sure how it was for you guys, yes. but picking one glass jaw song felt like picking my favorite kid. That yeah. one. <laughs> that one. <laughs> and that one. That one and that one. <laughs> my favorite wife. Yeah. That one. That one. There you go. Yeah. 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 Was it difficult for you guys? No. Uh, it really wasn't. Nope. I, yeah. I love a, a ton of Clash All songs, but this one just it. I I had two. I had two that I struggled with. I picked one of them, but I yeah, definitely. Again, this keeps surprising me, man. We all pick different ones. I like that, and I was actually I surprised me too about some of you guys' choices. Mm -hmm. Really, I just thought it was. What everybody, I thought everybody thinks what I think. Yeah. <laughs> I'm awesome and perfect. Everyone should think what I think. Because uh, I'm right. <laughs> Moses. You go first? Yes. Tell us which one you picked. So I went with everything you wanted to know about Silence off of that album. Great. And um, there's just something about that song. Uh, just the way that, that kind of disjointed jazz at the beginning and the lyrics, just the emotion behind those lyrics. It gets me every time. Almost kind of brings me to tears. And I'm not yes. even a crier, really. But it just, that hook in the chorus is probably one of my favorite hooks in any song would you say he's a great singer yeah it's it's different it's definitely unique but um i would definitely put him up as a great singer in, in terms of just technicality yes he, the way he holds notes absolutely what round of american idol would he make it to oh <laughs> he'd make it to hollywood but he wouldn't be no carrie underwood <laughs> where do you come up with these Dude, zingers all day son <laughs> um I, I don't think he's a great singer you don't i think no. how he uh, fluctuates his voice yeah the way he holds notes and the way he can control his voice makes him to me a good singer That's and cute. micah described it the best way about him and bart mccracken you can sing all their lyrics with just completely sticking your tongue out <laughs> every time they sing you can That's just stick true. your tongue straight in your mouth Any <laughs> little hack there yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I but hey, there's something to be indifferent, though, right? Agreed. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And what I wanted to say is, I don't think he's a great singer, but I think he's an amazing front man. Oh yes. God. And I feel the same way about, you could say it a lot about Neil Young. You could say it about, you know, uh, Smashing Pumpkins, you know, Billy Corgan. Mm -hmm. 
I, I don't, they're I don't the require guy. great singers in the songs that I like. Right. Uh, I like the uniqueness, and that was definitely one of the things that mm -hmm. caught me early. And the energy for me was a lot of it. Yep. But yeah, I definitely think he's a great front man. Yes. And no doubt about that. No. So you pick what, Moses? Go Everything ahead. you want to know about science, yeah. silence. You want to hear it? Yeah. I got it right here. Yeah, do it. Fancy computer and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Old laptop. Laptop guy. <laughs> <laughs> You guys heard that song before? <laughs> Once or twice. Once or twice. Just now. Maybe every day. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. That album came out on Roadrunner Records, mm -hmm. and it was very different from anything else, especially at that time, on Roadrunner Records. And that was part of the appeal. You know, Roadrunner... Road, yes, they were it. Roadrunner Records Say was... Say that five times fast. <laughs> yeah, not, it's not easy. <laughs> Roadrunner Records was uh, the deal, like yes, you like to say. They were. It was a banger. It was and, a banger. And it was Roadrunner, and not only that, but the combination of Roadrunner and Ross Robinson at the time. Yeah. Which was the, the mixture that you wanted, yep. especially back then. Mm -hmm. But just so different from anything else on that record label. And part of the appeal to me, definitely. You know, yes. it was it was sort of a, I keep saying, breath of fresh air in a lot of the bands that what we it talk was. about. That's but exactly it, what it was. definitely though. it. And like Brandon said about like almost crying, listening to it, like you can feel in his lyrics, the way he sings, like I said, with the range on it to the emotion, like yeah. that dude feels you feel every, that pain. And yes, when he's singing, I'll get man. every single time still to this day, 22 years later, I'll get chills. I'll get teary eyed. Like I've heard it for 22 years and it still gets to me. Yeah, goosebumps every time that hook yes. comes in on the chorus. Yes. And I do love his lyrics and I love Same. how just vulnerable he put himself yes. out there, what he said. And I know he got kind of a, accused of being misogynistic in some of the things he mm -hmm. said. It could be at times. Yeah, he drops C-bombs and calls them the W, the whore and all that. But, I mean, he feels it. He was hurt at that time. It was just, it felt like as real as I've heard on record. Yes. Right. Just completely exposing himself through the lyrics. I'm guessing. I don't and, know. And maybe that's why he doesn't play those songs live anymore. Because when we saw him in Memphis, they didn't do hardly anything or didn't do anything off that record at yeah, all. They, and maybe he doesn't feel like he can sing those songs right. anymore. Yeah, I think uh, recently, and when I say recent, the last four or five years, Chad and I went and saw him. They were playing at a small club in St. Louis. Mm. And I think the only song they played from the album was Siberian Kiss. Siberian Kiss, they yeah. always yeah, will have on the set list. That, that's yeah. the only one that they'll go to, it seems like, on that album. <clears throat> Micah. I chose piano. Solid. Um, yeah, it's well, it's not my well, if I had only spin one album, I would spin worship and tribute, but piano off of everything you ever need to know about silence. Um, that song is an emotional roller coaster, mm -hmm. I feel like. Mm -hmm. uh, it starts super intense chugs through these down type of lyrics and then comes back up and then that it finishes with really the only screaming in the entire song um, real intense last 10 seconds and then you know like I said memories of that song yeah love it that's okay. the first glass jaw song that i heard oh yep. wow gotcha. that's a good one it hooked me right away yeah yep. did i show it to you probably yeah, i think so it was either you or chad that's usually how it goes. Chad yeah. shows Twan, Twan shows me, I show you. Yeah, yeah. our Twan shows Chad, and then Chad shows you, or Brandon, and then I just, I'm down here I like, I never hey, find out anything on my own. Yeah, I, 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 I get the scrap. I get the scrap. You're lazy. I'm pyramid, super, super lazy. Anybody that knows me knows that you need to find music and mostly everything else for me. <laughs> <laughs> the remote. Where, yeah, where's my shirt? <laughs> oh, God, where is the remote? Oh, God, where's the remote? Oh, Lord, where's the kid? <laughs> <laughs> There's two of them somewhere. <laughs> Let's hear it. You want to hear it? Yes. Aw. I know. We're all like... <laughs> so pretty. <laughs> Especially all these old, yeah. these old memories. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Reeling back. Three times alone, 
in hey, the fields. I, I played that one yeah. out. Yes. How did you guys, all of you guys, not pick that song? There's reasons, bro. Yeah. Don't judge yeah, us. My reasons. Yeah. <laughs> my life dad i'm my own person <laughs> i don't we already went over this micah we don't want your life we don't want your life <laughs> you aren't wrong though it is a fucking banger it actually might be my favorite glass Chalk song right but the most emotion i get from listening to glass Chalk comes from everything you want to know about silence and it does seem like that one resonated with a lot of people. I don't know anybody who hates that song. Yeah, how can you? No. And there's definitely, you know, you have the the quieter guitar at the end, and then it mm -hmm. it, it comes in, you yeah. know, and it, and it finishes kind of wild and crazy, too. Juan. My pick is Love Bites and Razor Blades. Mm. Good one. Yes. Bang it. Man, he is upset. He's, yeah. he's, he's angry. Mm -hmm. So for me, that song is the the best encompassing song. Like if somebody were to ask me what song do I listen to, I think it's that one. Because you get the craziness of what is all over that first album. Mm -hmm. And then the chorus and some of that bridge stuff he does is really coming in on the second album too with the melodies and the hooks that he's got and just the raw emotion of that song he says whore probably i don't know less than 10 times in that song mm. did the word whore get canceled i don't know <laughs> well that was yeah. he did enough for yeah. that was 83 though that was 80, <laughs> back at nom um, back in the day it was back in the day when i hear that i hear a lot of different things i hear i hear the it almost sounds schizophrenic the way yep. he's doing yeah. his vocals you know just crazy mm -hmm. but especially towards the end of that audio clip i hear great songwriting and big poppy hooks that are catchy they're yes. catchy yeah you like want to hear them again yeah i like how messed up it all is and then it just comes together in that hook and that chorus right yes there. Yep. so for me that is the perfect glass jaw song and that's probably my favorite one yeah we heard you yeah <laughs> you told us already <laughs> he don't care obviously because he barely gave us our well you barely heard it I know. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't even gonna let you i know, know. <laughs> he was already sounding off saying stay hydrated yep <laughs> <laughs> Stay hydrated, by the way. Stay hydrated. It's important. It's important. <laughs> Fuck your guys' songs, but drink water. Liquid death. I think that's a good choice. Yes, Thanks. it is. I think all these are good choices. Oh, now we're bringing him back. But I have seven honorable mentions. <laughs> Here's a whole album. <laughs> I'm here. Hell. Hey, it's me. This is, this is you? It's me. I'm here. <laughs> here we go. Ready? There's that word again. I, I still <laughs> don't know what that means. Yeah. You can lead a whore to water? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I, you can lead a horse to water. He's like, no, you can lead a whore to water. Yeah, I like the word play of that. I don't yeah. know what it means either. Yeah. Pretty lush. Pretty lush. First song ever heard by him. As soon as he came out screaming like that and I heard those vocals, like I said, I was instantly hooked, fell in love, and I could never go back from it. And you that's, haven't? That's, I have not. And that's why that is my favorite song, because it was the first time I ever heard it. And it's Heard track glass jaw. It's track one. Yes, and that's what I'm saying. As soon as I press play, love the way it just opens. Right yes, that's what I'm right saying. Out. Yes, no mm -hmm. intro or it, nothing. It just, it just this is right. who we are. We're gonna punch you in the face. Take it or leave it. Yeah, there is no intro on that, isn't no. there? It just, yes, we come out hot. That's what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, and that's why I heard it. Like my ears perked up. I'm like, what is this? There's no build up. Nothing. No, it's just here we are. 
And then like every year to like one of you guys or Micah or on Facebook, I always put like, I wish you a broken heart and a happy new year. Like, it's just a thing I do. Cause that's what I think of every new year's even like, Oh, glass jaw day. Like, it's glass jaw. Um, so we've I maybe discredited the later part of the catalog as an album. Which one's better for you? That one to me. Yeah. Tuan? As a whole album, the worship, whole, uh, tribute. Worship, worship and tribute, worship and tribute. Micah, you got an answer? Worship and tribute as well. Yep. So Dale, you're wrong. Cause it's worship and tribute. <laughs> Bye. I'll go home now. Right. <laughs> Cause it's worship now, and tribute. Now you can really fuck now off. You can really fuck <laughs> all the way off. <laughs> Funny story. You can cut this out or not, but story time, uh, how I got that CD. Yeah. Uh, was Stole going it from coast to coast. Same goody. Oh, <laughs> was going yeah, was going to see uh, Blink-182 and Newfound Glory. We pulled off at the mall in South County and walked in Sam Goody, and I thought it was slick. So I put it in my pants, and I walked in between the wall and the metal detector, thinking it wouldn't go off. Oh, contraire. Still went off. So I'm freaking out, and I'm like 16, 17. So I run over, and my buddy's sitting on one of the fucking benches, and he's got his little fucking Hollister bag because... Hollister. So I throw my CD under the bench behind the Hollister bag and the security guard comes down and looks looks left, looks right, and then shuts the alarm and I'm like, Oh, thank God. And then took Glass Jaw to listen to on the way to the concert. I love that. I owe Sam Goody and Glass Jaw money. So yes, I'll start to say you, sorry, not sorry. Congratulations. You stole from Glass Jaw. <laughs> yes. Surely surely the statue of limitations is up. Oh on yeah, it's scaling. over on that. And the shirts and other CDs and merch I bought from them. I feel like it's paid it off. Once, once the store closes, I think you're you're good. Yeah. yeah. Sam yeah. Goody's yeah. no longer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sam Goody shows up at your house tomorrow. It's <laughs> actually Sam. We, yeah, it's really him. He's got a name badge. Hi, my name is Sam Goody. Mr. Like, Goody. I'm Mr. Mr. Goody. Goody. <laughs> Maybe Here's your $23. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's a future segment, the best uh, CD you stole or the yeah. best album you stole. That was mine. <laughs> You're outvoted on that. That's fine. I accept that. But I know you love Worship and Tribute, too. I do. I also do love Worship, worship and Tribute. Still listen to that, that on the regs as well. So we got Pretty Lush as the opener on that one, and then we have Tip Your Bartender. Yes. They they, we, they like to open yeah, it up. They they do. Do. That's what I said. They punch you in that up. face. Once you press play, fucking be ready. And they... um. The one EP after Worship and Tribute, uh, the one with uh, You Think You're John Fucking uh, mm -hmm. Lennon, uh, that one actually had some build up, but still, if they hadn't have put that build up, that little uh, symbol tap yeah, that happens yeah. for a minute and a half or something, that one would have came out straight out yeah. smoking too. Yeah. It goes from practically silence to exactly. very chaotic yep. to here we are. We're still glass jaw. Yep. And that would have been my honorable mention, by the way. Ooh. There you Bartender. go. Bartender. Mm hmm. No. Oh, what, oh, you're thinking you're John fucking Lennon. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. or, I think for me, if we're just talking personal list, metal, heart, whatever they are, I don't care. Music. Uh, they're near the top for me. Yes. And especially worship and tribute. I'm sure if we put, if we put a, again, putting all genres aside, if you just pick music, a top 10, I'm sure worship and tribute would end up on my list. If not near the top. Mm -hmm. I think that much of that album, I, I think it's crafted in a way that it was, especially the balls so you have the balls to come out in such a wild and frantic yes way on a label that's not that's known for wild and crazy but it was a different wild and crazy metal like people you knew what you were gonna get yes mm -hmm. then to have the balls to come out with worship and tribute which has some heavier parts and some wild and crazy to it still but you have you have your eight dose right. mills and your must have run all days and yes where it's really a quieter album quieter songs mm -hmm. uh so i just think they've been a ballsy band the whole time they've been yes. in existence they're ballsy live even some of the things we're talking about with the merch and the uh the shows and the posters mm -hmm. and all that they've just kind of done it their own way the whole time and they've really again put themselves out there been vulnerable at times changed all our lives i mean we all feel the same way about them you know yeah. and actually when you mentioned the merch actually i remembered something uh mike and i used to live together back early 2000s and i think I couldn't make that Snowcore show at Mississippi Nights, uh, but actually Micah went and brought me a shirt back because I couldn't go, and it was oh. the best glass jaw shirt I've ever had, and it was the Guns Don't Kill People glass jaw. Oh, yeah. Kill people. I have, I have, I have that. People. I have that. Hell yeah. Do you still wear it? But it was a medium. <laughs> <laughs> I still have it and wear it. Those and that's the one, gone, that's the one that he scribbled on. That's the one he scribbled on of mine. I was like, oh, cool. Thanks. Yeah. Best, like you said, awesome. best yeah. merch shirt ever. Awesome. It was orange too, wasn't it? Yes, like bright orange, orange bright yep. orange with black fucking writing on. Right. Yep. I wear yep. it a lot on Halloween. All your picks have been off the same album. Uh, yes. Yep. Yep. But not mine. We ready to hear the real answer? The real answer. There it is. There. Larry. 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 <laughs> Damn 
That's the answer. It is a <laughs> great answer. It's the only it, right it, answer. Yes. It's a good answer. It is. It is an amazing song. As much as I love the real, the realness of the first album and the emotionality attached to it and the vulnerability, and you know, and that's again when we seen them live, they were opening for Deftones. It was on the first record. That second album for me was a game changer. Yeah. Because they were so energetic and live and wild and crazy and unpredictable the second album hit home even more so i think mm -hmm. if you would have got the same style or the same album I, I don't know if it would have been as big as it was at least for me right but it was well, i feel like the second album is a resolution to the first one almost and that's how it starts out but i'm not yeah. throwing stones at you anymore yeah mm -hmm. they yes. work really well that's together yeah. yes, yes. and it does sound like there was some maturity there right, right. Mm -hmm. yeah right there was some time and and, mm -hmm. and I, I don't know how often you'll see like a sophomore album being for me anyway being Bad. better than the original right. because they always say you take your whole lifetime to write the original. yes that one you put your heart and soul your debut album yeah. right the second one it seems always especially if there's a little bit of success it seems rushed and kind of the label trying to get it out there and kind of right. keep everything going so everybody says the first one is the and i and that's the case mm -hmm. almost 100 percent of the time for me yes agreed Weird. This one was different. Mm -hmm. This one I liked and I needed, especially for that time in my life, I needed a little bit of mature -er sound. Growth. They had their growth. growth. There it is. Mm -hmm. Yep. So uh, Brandon even said, you know, uh, nobody sounded like Glassjaw when that first album came out. Well, the same can be said about that band, period. Nobody, the Glass Jaw yeah, doesn't even now. sound like Glass Jaw, right? <laughs> yeah. Their first album sounds nothing like their second album. Their third album sounds, or the EP sounds nothing like their the second, second album. Yeah. There was just a, a, a straight evolution of that band. Mm -hmm. We talk a lot and we like to do lists, mm -hmm. top threes, tops, whatevers. When we do guitars, I'm just going to spoiler <laughs> alert you here. Yeah. Justin Beck is yeah. very high on my list. Mm hmm I think he is so different and so unique and that that's actually underappreciated to very yes mm -hmm. very rhythmic you know I remember him using a wah pedal especially on that second record where you think of a wah pedal you think of maybe Jimi Hendrix at Woodstock or something yeah, yeah. he was using it as a almost in an effect and a, and a noise a producer or whatever it was he just I love his I love the way he plays I love how he can do a lot of different things. And Glassjaw really is those two. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. It is. Also, the second album was my favorite Glassjaw as a whole. I liked all the other members. Those pieces, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Head Automatica that, guy. Yeah. And maybe that's because I've seen him a lot around that time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and we talked on the podcast before how Shannon Larkin of Amen and Snot and um, Ugly Kid Joe. Yep. He did the drums on that record. Which yeah came out just recently yeah, yeah and that like i said that i can't believe that they had a drummer and he got sat there and had to watch yeah dude shannon larkin track those drums wow. for him as a drummer that would be weird i wouldn't uh, like no. it <laughs> no. i wouldn't like it at all mm -mm. that would really be an ego check <laughs> yeah i know i was like god i suck <clears throat> later glass jaw the ep had some yeah. good tunes on it it did it's almost industrial yeah so it, it is got that it vibe is. It just it, never gels, though. It does sound like some of the drums are programmed. I do like the John Lennon. Yeah. And yes. The, yeah. Our Color Green, The Coloring Book, which is uh, an album I like. Mm -hmm. And then Shira in 2017, I didn't get that much into. Yeah, I, I still try, though. I still yeah. try to go back yeah. to it a lot. I, I even went back to it the other day. And there's a couple parts that really still get me, though, that, that old glass jaw kind of breaks through. Even... Not even old glass jaw, because you know how we just talked, how there not really right. is an old glass jaw. Yeah, just right. glass jaw. But uh, I was wanting a little bit more, I guess. Because I think that's what we were used to I, and what we fell in love yeah, with. I, I agree with that. I, I I think I had the same feeling. Yeah. Uh, natural Born Farmer, All Good Junkies Go to Heaven. I, like, I love that all jam, good All Good Junkies, junkies Go to Heaven. That's the one that's I was the, thinking of, yeah. There was a pretty big gap between a worship of tribute and anything else they put out. And I remember that even being like a teaser, mm -hmm. one of the beginnings of those songs where oh, they had a countdown on their website. And yes. everything. Yeah. 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 And it was just like a drum pattern or something. Right. And, and it pissed me off more than anything. Yeah. But. <laughs> but then when we saw them at the high tone in Memphis that time we talked about before, that's when they like were handing out that album. And I still yeah. have it in my yep. CD case in my car. Like they gave it away. They they do things like that mm -hmm. yeah. where they'll have special edition posters for certain tours and albums yep. that yep. you can only get at the show it's kind of yeah it's pretty awesome. neat some yeah. of the stuff that they do yeah there's another band that's doing that now i'm gonna at racy at the beginning of uh, next month i'm super excited about it baroness 
Will they do like limited edition type things? It's, it's, show it's one of those evening with. So it's only them playing. Mm-hmm. And they have like a, with the ticket comes like a poster and that's only made for the St. Louis stop. And awesome. Yeah. That is cool. It's been fun talking glass jaw guys. Has, yeah. Yes. It's been yes. fun it's talking fun. old times. We get to do that enough. And we got the we, we got the band jaw. we got the band back together. Yeah, so yeah. I say great yeah. talking to Moses. Good yeah. good yeah. time talking to Micah. Nice. Thanks for yeah. having the guys. boys. This is yes, boys. It's been great. This is the best birthday I've had in a, in a long time. Oh, of course yeah. the birthday. Yeah. Yeah. He's 21. Yeah. We're going <laughs> we're we're to drinking yeah. after this. For his first time ever. Going to the bars. To the bars. <laughs> Micah, you remember Black that uh, show with Far From Yesterday when it was my birthday? Or I actually might have not even been my birthday. It doesn't matter. You said it was my birthday on stage and you said I was 12. <laughs> Got a good laugh. I remember that. I do remember that one. <laughs> Got a good laugh. I think it was at the Rock House. Yeah, it was. I think it was. Yeah. yeah. Apparently he threw stickers in the crowd. Do you remember that at all? They, yeah, and they ended up on like every stop sign mm-hmm. in Monterey. Yes. Oh, that was Dale. Yeah, me there. and Justin Montgomery. Shout out to Monty. Yeah, hit every yeah. stop sign in Monterey. Hilarious. Boy, we had some fun back then, didn't yep. we? Yep. Yeah. And Glassjaw was a big part of that. Much respect to those guys. Thank you, Glassjaw, for Thank being you. Glassjaw. We love you. Me and Tuan did see him. Make a many, new album. Yes. <laughs> how many years ago was that, Tuan, where we saw him at that smaller club? Uh, within the last four years, probably. Yeah. I mean, they, yeah. they killed it. They, Never seen them not slay. Yeah, they absolutely slayed. Yeah, it, was, it was definitely a different show. Uh, Daryl doesn't do as much of uh, all over the place running around and knocking himself out yeah. anymore. Yeah. But um, he, he was kind of stationary a little bit, but fuck, he still sounded good. Yeah. What about Head Automatica? Love Head Automatica. Oh, yeah. Great album. Beating Hearts, baby. Yes. Yeah. Fun, catchy. Love well, that song. Makes you bop space, up and that's down. That's almost a pop album. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it makes you bop up and down, do a little dance and sing along too. I love Head Automatica. I got into some of the songs. Uh, I can't say that I love them. No, but, not all of it, no. Yeah. Like the first four, I I absolutely love. Beating Heart, the, baby, the, though. The Razor. Song. The Razor's yeah. Oh, good yeah, that's a good one. Yes. Love Fuck, I'm going to end up listening to that on the yep. way home. Now. <laughs> yeah. I like that one too. Yeah, I dig it. I really do. There's, yeah, there's three or four songs on that CD that I loved. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, we'll, we're going to we're gonna close out of here. We're going to listen to Glass Jaw and Head Automatica. Head Automatica. <laughs> head Automatica. There it is. And hopefully, you guys too follow us on Facebook. Get in on that group. Send some funny memes and some post some videos of some metal stuff. We have a lot of things coming up in the future. This episode was brought to you by Liquid Death Mountain Water and Black Bayou Coffee Roasters. Check out the wellnessinvestors.com store and upcoming blog. We have some interviews coming up that we're going to put on print uh, here soon. So be checking all that stuff out. We appreciate you guys listening in, guys. Stay metal. Stay metal. Love you, Micah. (laughs) Moses, Micah. We love you guys. Love you guys. Love Love you, Moses. Thanks for coming home. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Love you, Lars. (laughs) <laughs> what? He We're still longer. Mind. He got <laughs> his jam in. <laughs>